iGenity is a proud sponsor of I Am Angus. For more information, visit iGenity.com. Why plantation? started back in the 1600s. And back then they grew tobacco, uh, corn, uh, and livestock. Uh, I think they had Guernsey cows here. The farm remained in the family of William Peca from the 1600s up until 1937. William Peca was the governor of Maryland and a signer of the Declaration of Independence, uh, is buried here on the farm. So in the course of 350, 400 years, this farm has had two owners and has had the same group of cows on it since 1937. This uh, farm was bought in 1937 by a man named Arthur Houghton, who was the uh, head of Corning Ware and Steuben Glass up in Corning, New York. He was um, looking for a piece of property and uh, kind of have his own little colonial Williamsburg, so he restored the formal gardens. Um, and then had all this land and then pursued in the, in the cattle business. And he was, he was very um, interested in factual numbers and said if they want to do something, they're going to do it right. And um, he hired a farm manager named Jim Lingle and they decided um, they had bought 18 Angus females from about five miles from here and started breeding um, cattle for meat production. So he, he imported uh, two bulls in dam uh, from a farm not far from here, Jurymen of Wickwire and Puck of Wickwire. And the combination that seemed to work was the uh, Puck on the Jurymen daughters. And then when he had done that for about eight or ten years, he uh, needed some more bulls, so he went to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales and imported 19 bulls that were used here and then in 1959 closed the herd. So everything that we have today goes back to one of those original 18 females and a majority on the paternal side goes back to Puck of Wickwire. Mr. Lingle, being from the dairy business, was fascinated by numbers and what they wanted to try to do was put on the most pounds of beef in the least amount of time. Uh, but he went to a meeting uh, in the early 50s put on by the University of Maryland and was introduced to a man named Will, Dr. Willard Green. And they struck up a partnership where they would do these feeding trials down here and the University of Maryland would be the independent third party to verify the results. And they built upon that test. Uh, every bull has been tested here since 1954. And as through selection and breeding decisions, uh, their goal was three pounds a day. And up in the when they started in 1954, um, I think around 50 to 52 percent of the bulls would gain three pounds a day. And then when they, f um, in 1978, I think that number was up to about 92 percent. I think they were so much different than what was being produced in the United States in the baby beef era, and they were Scotch genetics uh, imported from England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And because they never sold any females with papers, it was you couldn't you couldn't buy a female and then start your own Y herd. They did all their sales private treaty. They never had an auction here. The biggest sale they had was Lodge of Y. Uh, sold him in the syndication. They sold Lodge and five of his sons for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the late sixties. In the seventies, they also syndicated Linebacker for two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. And I think in the 75, 76, um, 77 era, they were you know, selling 100 bulls and they would average 15,000 uh, bucks for these bulls, all sold private treaty. Well, Mr. Houghton um, was heading toward retirement and he wanted to do something with the farm, but he didn't, they had done so much work with the University of Maryland that he decided to, uh, he created the University of Maryland Foundation and gifted the herd and the extensive semen bank and some bulls to the university and donated all the land to Aspen Institute. 
which is a nonprofit organization that puts on think tanks and seminars for different companies and organizations. I always tell people I have the greatest job in the world and then was fortunate enough in 1986 to apply for the herd manager down here at Y and got that job and was promoted to program manager in 1996. So Y Cattle is all I've ever worked with uh, my whole life. Y Plantation matters to Maryland because we have to protect our resources. Within 200 miles of where we are, there is nine million people and those nine million people have to eat and we need to do it in the most efficient, economical way that we can.